You know something? We get called to speak. And sometimes we in life have to speak our mind when it comes to the things that are important to us. For all that are listening, like, comment, subscribe to the podcast here on the Mitchell Report Unleashed YouTube channel. But I want to be here to speak about authentic, raw communication. And I'm truly going to say something here that it's getting worse. We're not wanting to communicate with our one and others. And, I, and I'm going to speak to the three pillars. There's actually four. But I really want to speak to the three. The three pillars are relationships, friendships, and business. And I really want to speak to the relationship, friendship aspect. Because business, I can sum it up like this. Me as a podcaster, I reach out to folks all the time. And I always say the rule of thumb is in the response time is nearly always going to be about one to two business days, or sometimes it's within the week. Could be two weeks also, too. That will sum that up. But you can also spot when someone is being inauthentic with how they want to communicate. And if they're really just communicating with you just to ride on the coattails. Or are they actually wanting to communicate to actually build? Because, you know, what I've seen happen over the last three to four years in the pandemic, the pandemic taught me a couple things. It taught me, look at the folks that are around you in the pandemic. Now look at the folks that are around you after the pandemic. And you see all the answers that it is you need to have in front of your face. See, the thing in life is we have some folks that are around us. And we're going to speak to the friendships first. That no matter how much you pour in, you're getting nothing back. And the reason why when you're pouring in, you're not getting anything back is because they don't receive who you are because they're not right with themselves. They're not right with himself. Cause if you see, here's the thing is this, if you're right within self, you'll do everything it is that you want to do to build, to nurture and to respect that quality of friendship. You don't take days off in a friendship. You don't take nights off in a friendship. We get it. Life happens to all of us. How many times have y'all been really just looking at things where you reach out to someone that's in your inner circle and it takes them a day or it takes them two days or it takes them three days or it takes them four days to respond back or a week or two weeks to respond back? You got to start identifying those things and say, well, wait, am I pouring into this person or am I pouring into this person because they actually see the same sort of quality of respect? Let me listen to me. I'll tell you this. The people that are in my inner circle, we may not talk all the time, but best believe the real ones will always respond back in a timely manner. Now I'll speak to the ones that don't respond back to a timely manner because this is where things just get really, really funny. And it gets comedy relief. And I'm not here to be on a soapbox rant because this is not what this is about. It's about really just applying the foundation of what social skills really truly is. And I think that, like I said, again, the pandemic has ruined that for all of us. When we sat here for the last three to four years, we had to find inner ways to know how to connect. We were on High Five. We were on Clubhouse. We were on all these social media apps, FaceTime, group calls, Zoom messaging, dinner parties, all of this stuff. In the pandemic, when the world was slowing down, we were forced to just dig deep inside of ourselves. But now you sit here and you look at it. The world's open up. Everybody's doing what they need to do. People are going to work. People are finding new opportunities. And we miss the bar. We miss the lens of what communication truly works and it looks like. See, I'm tired. 
and I'll say this as you, to, to, I'll say this to everyone here. I'm tired as far as when you get into our groups and friends, and there's some people that share the similar views. They say all the same things. We have folks that are around us that really, at the end of the day, are just energy drainers. We reach out to them. They don't reach out back to us. It takes them, it takes them days to respond back. Hmm. Are you really that busy? No, you're not. It's just not a priority to you. The friendship is not a priority to you. I'm over this whole conversation of, I'm sorry, I missed your text. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going through something three or four or five days later or two weeks later. Focus and ask yourself this question. If you're truly going through something and you want to say that you're friends, are you going to distance yourself from that person? No. You're going to distance yourself because when you don't have the alignment and you don't have the verbal communication skills to say is, hey, listen, I'm going through something right now. I just want to let you know that. Listen, I need to take some time to unplug, yada, yada, yada. But we don't want to do that because that's the key word called vulnerability. See, we're not all here to help people. I get that. I understand that. I get it. Not everyone needs a coach. Not everyone needs to, you know, work on their therapy. And that's the reason why you see a lot of folks out here just, you know, happy waking up, doing their nine to five and being a hermit. But for me, that's not what we're, we're, we do here. For the folks that actually follow me in this community here on YouTube or Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook, this is not what we do. The true ones believe in the relationship. When's the last time you ever asked yourself is when you have friends that are actually in your inner circle invite you out to go somewhere. They invite you out. Could be an appreciation event. Could be that party. Randomly, you get those messages and you get those texts. I get those messages and I get those texts. You want to know why I get those messages and I get those texts? Because of the value and how people actually simply sit here and they respect who you are. See, for all my master communicators out here, yo, guys, what's going on? I appreciate you. Thank you. Turn on all bell notifications, subscribe, like, and comment to the podcast. It's the best way to stay up to date. And hey, it helps us gain the clarity and boost ourselves into that algorithm. We appreciate the support each and every day, each and every week. Let's keep on going to keep on growing. Peace. We don't have time to waste with people that are simply sitting here. And you're just master manipulation of our time, of our energy, of the energy we put forth. We don't shy away from the conversations. But too many times we got folks that are around us that I just truly believe they just don't see us where we're at. Because they're quote unquote going through something. Well, guess what? It's okay to go through something. But going through something by yourself is not how you're going to heal. Going through something by yourself is just going to create more destruction. And it's going to create more wounds being open. It's going to create more issues. It's going to create more distance. See, when 2020 came around, we were connecting virtually. We were connecting through our phone lens. We were connecting through all of these different apps because the world went to a standstill. Now that the world's going around, we're now separating even more than ever. We're not being authentic in the ways that we want to communicate with each other. We just simply sit here and what do we do? We just take everyone for granted that's around us. We need to stop taking folks for granted. And we need to really start seeking inward. You see, friendships, you got to walk to find the real people that are in your life. But it just seems consistently day to day, we got folks that are just stagnant energy. They're not really aligned with who we are. And that's the reason why they slowly drop off. Heck, you know what? Maybe it's jealousy. Maybe it's envy. Maybe it's just y'all don't vibe. 
maybe that you're leveling up too much for them. And they realize that they can't reach where you're going. And that's okay. That's okay. Because you know what in life they say is we change our friend group every, what, five years? That's what the stat is. We shed old skin to get new skin and to get new folks that are coming around us. Because it's the crazy thing in life that I've always noticed is that the more you level up, the more you get those attribute points, the more you simply sit here and master what it is you're doing, the better off it becomes. You start seeing all the right folks attracting you. You see all the right energy that comes around you. You see all the right energy that is attractive, not toxic. Too many times we sit here in our friend groups and we say, that's my friend. That's my bestie. But realistically, is that your friend and your bestie if y'all are simply sitting here talking what? What? Every two weeks? Once a month? Once every four months? We're not that fucking busy to respond back to messages. And we're not that fucking busy to respond back to a phone call at a decent amount of time. I'm going to let you into a little secret here in my life. See, the people that are around me know. They know. Within the hour, I respond back to you. Within the hour. That's my standards. That's my boundaries. And that's my principles. I'm not saying that I'm glued to my phone. Because if you look at my screen time, I'm on my phone for about, what, six to seven hours. That's average. The average person. But that still shows that I'm an optimal prime example that I'm not doom scrolling. I'm not in and out of DMs. I'm not soliciting dick pics. I'm not soliciting, you know, the foolish propaganda that's out there. I'm actually getting things done. And the ones that know me know that I'm putting the time, I'm putting the energy, and I'm putting the space. You'll hear back from me within the hour. It doesn't go past four hours. That's facts. See, I'm not here to debate opinions of what other people are going to say about this video. I'm here to debate the facts. The facts of the matter is, is that you got to pour into the people that are pouring into you. And what is it you're doing? We're so disconnected as friends. We're so disconnected as loved ones. We're so disconnected in general that we don't know how to provide what authentic communication feels, looks, and sounds like. Because what do we do? We make all these excuses and we make no adjustments. You may heck see someone that you like. You may like a couple pictures on Instagram. You may go into conversation. Hey, I find you interesting. Ba, 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 this, that. And what does it turn into? Low hanging fruit. Because your energy that you're coming with is pure. That other person's energy is maybe distracted. I've always said is, especially in even the dating sp in the dating space, more than ever in the dating space, be open and honest about your asks, about what it is you want. Because real people are not mind readers. We're not here to sugarcoat bullshit. We're here to go to the spot. If we see something that it is we like, we ask for it. Any man, any woman knows when someone's interested in you. We play those little social media games. We like things on Instagram. You know, we may like a story to get your attention. Heck, that was, that was said on a, on a dating podcast. <laughs> you know, men, if you really want to get that girl's attention, like a couple of her stories. Then you'll see what happens. You know, or you just go straight in the DM and you be, you know, hey, listen, I find you appealing. Are you open to have a conversation? Ba, ba, ba. You'll get an answer. It's either going to be yes or no. This is life experiences. Shout outs to the ones that are being straight up with their ask. But then you have some folks out here that are not genuine with even that. You reach out to them. You say to them, hey, listen, ba, 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 this, this, this. They leave you on red. That just shows that you're resonating here doesn't resonate with them. 
because they don't know how to simply sit here and get connected. They're disconnected. And I know what everyone's going to say. They're going to say, oh, Rory, well, you know, if they don't respond back, that's an answer within itself. See, here's the thing is this. When you walk a line of being real within yourself, all the answers come unfolded. If you don't ask, you will not receive. We're not mind readers. Lately, when I get involved with folks, I always hear this thing about, oh, don't podcast me. You know, everything with you seems like it's a podcast. Why? Because I'm a strong communicator. Why? Because I have a gift for gab. Why? Because I actually sharpen my tool each and every single day. Not everything is content. Not everything is podcast. It's years of work. It's years of reading. It's years of understanding what it is I want. It's years of understanding what my boundaries and my non-negotiables are. And if you don't match any of those boundaries and non-negotiables, you no longer can have access to me. So many folks think they can just swipe that card anytime they want to. They're in and out of communication. Oh, I can swipe that card. Well, guess what? Now these days, access is denied. I don't have time no more to simply entertain low-hanging fruit. If you're someone that actually stands up for what it is you believe in, you don't operate with low-hanging fruit anymore. You put your best foot forward, you know what it is you want to do, and you get to the spot. You put the work in. You rally with the real folks that are around you in your friends group. And heck, if you're dating somebody and y'all are solid, keep hold of that. Because that right now is the rarest commodity to find out there. Because there's so many folks that in the dating pool, they're perpetrating frauds. They're not even being open and honest with their real self and what it is they want. They don't know how to be open and honest in our friend groups. They don't know how to be open and honest in a dating pool because they're not aligned with the right principles and values. That's the reason why you get the one day responses. Takes two days for them to respond back. Takes a whole week for them to respond back. You're not that fucking busy. Because when you have your phone so connected to you, 365 attached to your hip, you can't say, oh, well, I've been busy. I didn't see your message. Stop making excuses and make more adjustments. You know how many times in 2024 I've heard this whole thing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What does sorry truly mean? Are you actually sorry? Yo, I'm sorry I missed that message. Sorry I didn't respond back. I'm sorry that I, 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 I missed your call but it takes you days to weeks to respond back. You're not sorry. True apology and a true sorry is, hey, listen, such and such, I didn't show up. But you know what? I want to get better. That's what a true apology is. Because when you apologize and you show that you're sorry, you don't do it continuously again. Too many folks want to simply sit here and ignore because they're hurt inside they're hurt in the depths of their belly they're hurt because of what a past relationship past friendship past job if you haven't made peace and alignment with your past you can never see what's ahead of you that's why i've always said is make sure you make peace with everything it is that you do in your life Make peace with those past relationships within reason, within reason, make peace. And that's the reason why communication's broken because we don't come into it with love in our heart. We come in it with poison. We come into it with the, the, the propaganda of, oh, well, this person's gonna hurt me again. Because this friend group I was a part of, they hurt me. Well, they're going to hurt me now. This new set of people are going to hurt me. Survey the land and actually ask yourself this question. Who's real versus who's fake? There's a lot of real ones around us. But realness is so hard to come by. Communication's so broken these days because you know why? We're not listening. 
with intention. We're not listening from an area of just wanting to understand. We listen with the area of just responding. I've said that so many times on a podcast. I've said that so many times on Instagram reels. We're not listening to one another. That's the reason why communication is broken. We're not one. We're not spiritually or universally aligned. It doesn't have to be about spirituality. It doesn't have to be about universal. It starts with self. When you put your head on that pillow, are you okay? Are you okay looking in the mirror as the man or the woman or whatever you identify with? Are you okay? Are you okay with what you're looking at in the mirror? Because when you look in that mirror and you tap that skin, you're going to feel that sting. Communication, man. Communication. It's at its worst. It's at its worst. It's at its worst when it comes to friendships. We're boys. Oh, that's my girl over there. But y'all haven't talked for the last six months, but that's your girl. That's your bestie. (laughs) Why are you lying? So many times you see these folks on Instagram. Oh, that's my day one. But y'all haven't even spoke for a whole year, but that's your day one. You're doing it for the social media vanity metrics. That's your day one, right? That's your day one, truly. See, your day one's the one who's going to show up. It covers all, all your spots. You know, there's four sides to a house, and there's four sides to us. You have your front, you have your left, you have your right, and you have your back. Does that bestie, does that day one cover all those blind spots? <laughs> if you want to take it military, are they covering your six? <laughs> A lot of times we got folks that are covering our six that guess what? They wouldn't even simply sit here, go to bat for us. Notice it. You see, the same reason why our friends and maybe our loved ones can't celebrate us, can't root for us, because when they're in those private rooms, when they're private gatherings, they were just bashing and thrashing your name. That's why they can't publicly celebrate you. Because to publicly celebrate you means that they're perpetrating the fraud. So why do we hold on to these relationships? Why do we still hold on to these people? It's not that we can't do better. It's because guess what? We have not identified who we truly are. That's why I believe in standing up for your boundaries and your non-negotiables and stay cemented in that. When somebody does something that is close to you that you're trying to get to know, or maybe in your friend group, and they're not showing up for you, you need to start calling it out. You need to start calling this out. And you want to know why you need to start calling it out? Because at the end of the day, if you don't, people are always going to wreak havoc. People are always going to wreak havoc because they can think, hey, I can swipe that card anytime I want. I can swipe that card in that dating relationship anytime I want. Because they don't have no boundaries and they have no negotiables. But guess what? When you start raising your vibration to a higher, a higher power, when you start standing up and believing for what it is you want to believe in, when you start reading the books, when you start going through the therapy, when you start simply sitting here firing the real coaches, that's when you start seeing change happen in your life. When that change starts happening in your life, you start vibrating with a whole different aura. When you have that different aura, when you walk out and people just have to stare They can't really say what it is they want to say because they realize that they're not fully aligned with you because that's what it all comes down to. Some of us have been through some traumatic mess while some of us have escaped that traumatic mess. But you know what we've done? We've made peace with our past, though. A lot of y'all still holding on to lingering issues with parents past exes with past business deals 
with past friendships and you have never addressed what was on your mind. <laughs> Let me tell you something, a little newsflash for a lot of folks. I had an ex 15 years ago come back and say she was sorry because guess what? She didn't, she didn't like the way she treated me. She sat with that for 15 years. Well, guess what? I had peace in my heart that day that I accepted it and I said, hey, it's all good. And I kept it moving. See, when you have love and you have peace in your heart, you can accept those moments in life because guess what? Folks will always simply sit here at the end of the day and guess what? Always think about the good times, the good old times in life. Those good times in life that guess what? We remember. But since we were so disconnected within self, we were so disconnected within reality, what ended up happening is we had to keep living with that veil over our eyes. And then we see the level up continue each and every day to where we start creeping them on social media. We start creeping them on their Facebook. We start creeping them on their jobs. And then what do we do? We then show up and we have to make that self-acceptance speech and say, we're sorry for how we treated you. Because the guilt at the bottom of your stomach is hurting you. That's when people want to start making peace. That's when people want to start making, you know, that acceptance. Took you that long to really understand what was going on in life? Shouldn't be that long. See, we're all gifted the same tools and resources, but it's about how you want to use it. Too many of us are on Crave and Amazon Prime and Netflix and all these social, you know, apps to watch shows and scroll on social media. But what information are you putting into your heart? What information are you putting into your brain? Because those are the two biggest vessels in your life. The two biggest, your heart and your brain. What you feed in your brain is what you feed in your heart. And what you feed in your heart, you feed in your brain. And that's the reason why you got to operate off the lens of love, peace, and prosperity. When folks are not aligned with you, they trickle off. When they don't believe in what it is you believe in, they trickle off. And that's okay. I've had to call a lot of folks out over these years because how they showed up for me. Last time I checked, I'm Elton John and I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Because what I say here is not what I'm not out here doing outside. The real can recognize real and they know how I show up for them. I know how I show up for my community. I know how I show up for my family. Because I understand what boundaries and non-negotiables are put in place. And people are going to say, how? How do you put those boundaries in your non-negotiables? The first starting point to actually start articulating what that means is looking in that mirror. Tap your skin. Feel on yourself. And ask, am I the man or am I the woman? at the maximum calibration that I can be. Authentic communication is missed. And we need to do better. We have to know better to do better. Heck, I got friends out here that are fully married with kids and we still communicate on a day-to-day -day basis. No distractions, no excuses. We make time because you make time for the things that it is you want in your life. If you don't want to make time for it, guess what? It disintegrates. Then you wonder where all the missed time has come. See, I have a fact that I want to bring out before we end this. I truly believe, I truly believe in my heart. I truly believe in my heart. People. Only be around people that are not going to hold them accountable. And that's the reason why they rally together. Because it's easier to navigate those conversations. Because guess what? They're not going to check me. Ladies and gentlemen. If you have people in your life that are like that. I believe that's one of the biggest downfalls that you can have in your life. You need to have 
one person, at least one person in your life that's going to check you when you're fucking up. When you're fucking up in those friendships, when you're fucking up in that relationship, when you're fucking up in those business deals, you need someone to point in your chest and say what? Hey, pull up them socks. Hey, don't treat people that way. Hey, start doing things a little differently. Start making self-acceptance with self first. Start taking love more into your heart. Because you know what? Accountability is an actual sexy thing. And when you apply that to the foundation of your life, guess what ends up happening? You end up breeding a different type of results. You start seeing different things in life. You start seeing people treat you different. You start seeing the things that are going to come into your life. You start seeing a, a sense of security in your life. Accountability is one of the most sexiest things that anyone can take and actually to apply to their life. Accountability. But too many times we're afraid of accountability because when we have to take accountability, we have to now look at ourselves in the mirror. And when we look ourselves in the mirror and we're not holding ourselves accountable, it starts to look ugly. Those ugly truths start creeping down our face. It starts crawling out of our skin. And that's the reason why around me I hold everybody accountable as of now. If you're not showing up for me, you're held accountable. I don't need to block. I don't need to delete you out of my life. I'll hold you accountable. And guess what? My boundaries will then delete you. My boundaries will then eliminate you out of my life because you realize you can no longer control the narrative anymore. You can no longer simply sit here and, and be one with self anymore. You can no longer use me for the time and the energy and the space anymore. Because guess what? When you come with boundaries and non-negotiables, now you have to simply sit here and be one with self. You actually have to simply sit here and be sending text messages and saying, hey, listen, are you available at this time? I'm pulling up to the city. Are you available at this time? I'm going to be calling your phone. Are you available at this time? Hey, listen, I'd love to hang out. Hey, if you're available at this time, we'd love to go take a vacation. That's what accountability looks like. We don't run away from it. We run towards it. But too many times, too many times, we just keep going. Tick, tock, tick, tock. What? To do what? At the end of the day, waste time. Stop enabling the time wasters in your life. Stop enabling those bad business deals in your life. And stop enabling people that have no right in being in front of you if they're not going to be looking at your blind spots, if they're not standing in front, to the left, to the right, and to the back. I've always said this, when you got good in your life, you don't ask what's wrong with it, you ask what's right with it. Because the universe or God, whatever you believe in, will always, will always, always, always put the right people in front of you at the right moment in time. But it's for you to understand the gifts. It's for you to understand what is inside self. And it's for you to simply sit here to get better. Accountability, man. Accountability. Accountable. Hold those people around you accountable if they're not showing up the way you want them to show up. It's a year of accountability in 2024. We all listened and we've all watched one of the greatest interviews, the highest grossing interviews that happened at the beginning of the year with Cat Williams. And what did Cat Williams say? He says, Shannon, it's a year of accountability. And so many folks watched that and they laughed and they reposted the videos, but they weren't listening to what Cat Williams was stating. He was saying, you got to be right with self, ladies and gentlemen. You got to be right with self. If you see something out there that it is you want, you go after it. If you see that relationship that it is you want, you go after it. You ask those questions. 
If you see that good energy, you hold on to it. You don't manipulate it. You don't in and out it. And like I said, the reason why folks will sit here and be inactive with their communication because you don't resonate with what it is they're doing. So they think, oh, I can swipe that card at any given time. But what happens when that card says access denied? What do then you do? You get mad? You punch the air? Sometimes the universe will tell you, hey, that person was just sick and tired of your bullshit. They were sick and tired of, you know, the lazy, lackluster friendship that you were hammering out. They'll eliminate the lazy relationship that you were simply holding on to and having such covenant to. Start really standing up for what it is you believe in, ladies and gentlemen. Really do. Really do. Really put your best foot forward. Really start asking yourself, am I being the man? Am I being the woman that it is I want to be in my authentic communication patterns? Because if you're not, you need to start looking into that mirror and you need to start making some acceptance changes with inside yourself because it's needed and it's necessary. Communication shouldn't be this broken. Communication should not be this broken. But it's broken because we'd rather be more distracted than devoted. We, we'd, rather be, we'd rather be broken. We'd rather be taken away because of the social programming that's out there or what society is telling us because we may have different views. You know what's so attractive is you can simply sit in a space and have a conversation with somebody and share different views and say, hey, it's okay to have different views. I see your perspective. You also see my perspective. And that's what we need to be open to is different perspectives. Instead of running towards things that are supposed to make us feel better, we run away from it. We're prisoners and we're slaves of our own mindset. Because hence, maybe that person posted something that triggered me. Oh, I don't like that. Or heck, maybe that person said something about me that I don't like. Well, I don't like that. So you walk away from it? Since when has society been so soft? We're so soft in this society because we got to pick and choose what it is we need to say. We got to pick and choose how we want to respond to folks because guess what? We're fearful of what the other person's going to think of us. You have to be open to different perspectives. You have to be open to different understandings in life. But too many times, too many times, we don't want to hear our one another. In what world in 2024 we thrive for so much communication that we can't even pick up the phone and have conversations with each other because we're so distracted. We can't just sit there for that hour. We can't just sit there for those two hours, be face to face without picking up that phone and have face to face communication and really just get down to the depths of things. That's in all areas. That's in all areas, folks. We don't want to be vulnerable with our one another because guess what? That shows all of our scars. But the right people will see you for that. The right people will honor you for that. The right people will cherish you for that. But we're so worried about what the last person did to us that we think everybody else is the same. If you put your boundaries in point, that's when you start seeing change happen. Seven and a half years doing a podcast, my boundaries have been up so high now. I've had past relationships with friends that have said, hey, listen, you shouldn't be talking about social injustice issues as a black man in Canada. How did that work out? Seven and a half years later, we're still going. I've had people make mockery 
certain episodes saying you're this, saying you're that. I look at my metrics, what's happening? I'm still going. Any weapon that is formed is never going to prosper against the Mitchell Report Unleashed podcast. And it's never going to prosper because guess what? I've made the inner connections within self. That's the reason why I can walk out here and I can hold my head high. That's why my community can simply sit here and respect everything it is that I'm doing. That's the reason why everyone that simply sits here and clicks like, it clicks share, that reaches out and pours into me when I'm out and about. I saw that episode. This episode's this. Or, hey, I've been seeing the podcast. I've been seeing the growth in its infancy. They can respect that because you know why? They know I'm not out here perpetrating a fraud. And they know that everything that it is that I say each and every single episode is who it is that I am. And it's what I stand up for, what it is I believe in. I'm not drinking my own Kool-Aid. But I know how to show up for people. I know how to pour into the ones that need to be poured into. And by goddamn well, no. I can simply sit here and know how to curate a space to have the proper conversations. I can simply sit here and say what it is I need to say, how I want to say it, and guess what? It may not land for you right then, but guess what it will do? It will make you understand the points of view. Because what I do is I continue to keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And I hold myself accountable 365 days for the year. And I keep on pushing and I keep on rallying and I keep on connecting and I keep on shaking and I keep on jiving. Because that's all I know how to do. (laughs) I find it so offensive when you go out and people say is when you're in conversation because you're so skilled at the art of communication. Oh, you're just going to podcast me? Is this going to be one of your podcast episodes? You need to pull your head out of that sand. And you need to just look up and actually just say to yourself is, for you to use those ad hominems, for you to use confirmation bias anytime we speak, and you got to make and you got to poke fun, you're not ready to receive a big energy, high quality person of myself. Because where I'm destined to go, only a small percentage is going to be coming with me. Where I'm destined to go, I know the purpose and the reason why I do what it is I do every single week. Where I'm destined to go makes me sleep well at night. Where I'm destined to go is that I know that I can simply sit here at the end of the day and truly believe and say to myself, I've put nothing but hard work, dedication, blood, sweat, and tears into this craft. Communication is missed because we no longer see people for who they are. We're so distracted that we can't simply come to grips and understand that there's real life folks out here that are pouring into us, but we're so blinded to the fact that guess what? We don't see them for who they are. We only see them and we only hold them at face value. But we only will remember those folks because when they're no longer in our life, And then we sit back and we look and say is, what happened to that person? What happened to that person is that person was sick and tired of you mismanaging the time, the energy, and the effort. And that's the reason why they took their bags, they packed them, they put their boundaries and their non-negotiables up, and you no longer can benefit from it anymore. I appreciate everyone for tuning in. If you watch it up to this far, like, share, subscribe to the podcast, and we are out. We'll be back next week. You know the vibes.